If you ever wanted a reason to have a glass of cab, I have one for you. Hi, I'm Mark Duncan and welcome to LVI TV. There's research looking at the positive effects of wine, and in particular, it turns out there's some positive dental effects. Now, surely you've heard about the heart-healthy benefits of having a glass or two a night and how that's supposed to be good for your health. Now, I'm pretty sure they're not talking about this glass of wine that it comes in, but rather pouring it into an actual wine glass. And that also lends to sharing that wine with a friend, and perhaps that's as important. It certainly makes it more enjoyable. There's also been some research that shows that Pinot Noir grape is essentially the fountain of youth, and it keeps you young forever. Unfortunately, if you take that in the form of wine, you're gonna have to drink enough wine that you destroy your liver in the process, but it's a great excuse to have a nice smell of Pinot every once in a while. Anyway, the cool new research I'm talking about comes from the Journal of Agricultural Food and Chemistry, and it details how researchers tested the effect of red wines, altered in several different ways, and the effect they had on cavities and gum disease causing bacteria bacterial communities called biofilms. Now, as you know, biofilms are the nasty little bacterial condo communities, and they actually have chemical feedback between the different colonies, and they have defensive mechanisms to protect their foothold in your gums. And as nasty as it is, the longer that they're left there, the more that they convert to obligate anaerobes and gram-negative bacteria, you know, the kind of bacteria that's only found in the other end of the GI tract. Now, sadly, most of our profession is trying to address these biofilms with the insurance standard of four quads and scaling and root planning six-week recall, and it simply doesn't work. If you want to heal the tissues, you need to destroy the biofilm, and it looks like the wine might do exactly that. Now, according to the study, the researchers grew several lab-borne cultures of bacteria responsible for different dental diseases, and they grew them out as biofilm. Then they subjected these test biofilms with various liquids, including alcoholic and non-alcoholic red wine, red wine with additional grapeseed extract, and then water spiked with 12% alcohol content. Interestingly, the researchers found that the red wines, and especially the red wines with the grape extract in it, were significantly better at dissolving the biofilms compared to the spiked water, showing that it's the wine and not the alcohol that's serving as an antimicrobial. I'm not suggesting you tell your patients to get rid of their floss and stop brushing. Maybe putting wine in their oral irrigator would improve compliance, but for sure they should be following through with your regular recommendations. Interestingly, we can actually heal bleeding pockets up to six millimeters back to a three millimeter perfect tissue health better than 95% of the time, and yet we still see some 80% of the adult population dealing with periodontal disease. Obviously, what we've been doing isn't working, so it's time to try something else. One of the most powerful things you can do is get up to speed with the techniques and protocols taught at, well, here at LVI's Perio program. That's another story. In the meantime, we're gonna have a glass of wine. Oh, and don't forget to like us and subscribe, and we'll see you next week. I'm Mark Duncan. I'm gonna go finish this. Cheers.